Hello coders, that didn't go too, too well to plan. I hope everybody is uh, having a great week. It is episode 111 and uh, I'm back. I wasn't here last week because I was taking a bit of time off, and um, but I'm back. And today I'm talking about K6 and load testing, my mini little adventure into load testing the... Uh, well, I've been using the howtocodeweld.net website as an example um, of practicing load testing and seeing where the pain points are on the site. Um, and uh, I haven't really been using K6 uh, for a long time, so please let's put a caveat on this and say that I'm incredibly new to this, to load testing. This is this is uh, quite a DevOpsy type of thing that I'm doing. And uh, I guess I've probably spent most of the evenings this week plus the weekend uh, last weekend working on uh, on K6 and what I'm going to do today is just talk about what I've done what K6 is uh, all the all the tools and, and things that I've got running um, the things that uh, I like about K6 and load testing the things that I've discovered um, the things that I didn't haven't I don't like uh, with K6 is uh, there's a there's 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 a few. Um, I think maybe though it's mostly because I'm new to it, but we'll 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 uh, we'll go through those. And then um, what I what I'm planning to do next. Now, none of this was on any of the roadmap at all for uh, how to code well. Um, but I thought as I've come back from my uh, my sort of holiday, I suppose uh, I would spend a week, give myself a week or two. Uh, to investigate load testing. It's always something that I've wanted to do. And I was shown K6 uh, before and uh, I, I really liked it. I thought it was a really good tool to use. And um, it's, it's an interesting... Um, it's an interesting mindset that you have to be in because as developers, what we do is we build a website or build a web application and we just refresh the page and go, oh yeah, look, that feature works. And we are in the mindset of, I am developing this and it's a one-to-one -one relationship. As in, I refresh the page and it's only me seeing it and because I can see it working, then that's my verification that that works. We don't often take a step back and go well hang on a minute what happens if a hundred people look at this in in a minute you know what happens if a thousand people look at this within within um five minutes how is the performance going to hand how is the site going to handle the performance how is it going to handle the load this is what k6 does and does incredibly well incredibly well so k6 is a great tool for load testing um and also off of the back of that, you have tools like Grafana. Now, Grafana is a monitoring tool. So K6 is the actual testing side of it. So this is creating the tests. And the tests are all done in JavaScript. And then Grafana is your sort of DevOpsy dashboard that has some really nice um, graphs and dashboards and, and charts that you can configure and you can, you can select multiple data sources and it's yeah it's really really good really really good and the the thing in the middle the glue in between is um i'm well you can use multiple data sources but i'm using influx db now all those three tools k6 grafana and, and influx db i'm incredibly new to inc incredibly new to as in like a couple of days new into it <laughs> well start of this week into it i guess so there might be things that I mentioned that um, my misconceptions, my my uh, my lack of knowledge, uh, my naivety in these topics. I am I am far from a DevOps kind of guy. <laughs> I am more a full stack dev. I lean towards the back end, and this is very new territory that I'm playing with. Hey. Hi, guys. Thank you, Martin. Hi. Thank you, uh, Daniel, for joining first. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining. We're talking about K6. We're talking about load testing today. Um, and we are we're going to explore some of the things that I like, some of the things I dislike and what I'm planning to do. Now, I'm time boxing all of this. I'm going to time box this to the end of next week. So what I did on Sunday uh, so I came back from my holidays on Saturday 
from my vacation on Saturday. And then I, I just basically picked up the laptop on Saturday when I got in and I started uh, playing with K6, played with it all through Sunday. And then I did a live stream on Twitch on Sunday uh, where I was showing you what I had done with K6. I then worked on it Monday evening and then Tuesday evening, I then worked on it even more live on YouTube. And since then, since that evening, it's progressed even further based on Wednesday, Wednesday's work, Wednesday evening's work. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm constantly learning, constantly evolving um, these tests, these test suites. Now, what I've done, I'll tell you what I've done first. So the website, howtocodewell.net, the website is, um, it's very light. It's very lightweight. And uh, there are certain pages that are behind like a login form. Now, what I've done is I haven't tested those. I've only tested the pages that can be accessed through a straight HTTP request. Um, so next week, what I would like to do is work on the, uh, the account section of it. And with K6, as I mentioned, it is JavaScript and you can um, submit forms with K6 because you just bring back the DOM and then you can play with that and submit the form and off you go. And what it's doing is it's measuring, it's, it's measuring um, various different metrics uh, per request. Now, interestingly, what they've done is they've created virtual users. They're called VUs, virtual users. And you can say that there is a, a, um, a duration of time in which these virtual users are going to hammer the website. Um, and using JavaScript, you can say, you know, you can put a sleep in there if you want to say, you know, to, to act like a normal um, user. So a normal user won't just suddenly click on a page, then click on another page, then click on another page. They'll read the website. So you could put it, I've, I, in some of the tests that I've got, I've, I've created a random number from zero to 30. So zero to 30 seconds as a sleep time. And you can also designate, like I said, a duration. And what it does is during that duration, it loops over um, those virtual user, users. So let's say you've got five virtual users and you, you are hitting one single HTTP request. So that's five users each hitting that one HTTP request. Um, and you've got a duration of time, say 10 minutes. And what happens is when they hit that, maybe if you've got a sleep going on, it waits for the sleep and then it hits again. And it keeps doing that, loops through that within that, dur that duration that you've specified. Now, there are a lot more complexities involved, a lot that I haven't even learnt. There's this thing called executors, um, and this determines how the virtual users are going to execute on, on the, uh, or access, I suppose, the HTTP request. So, for instance, you could have, um, there's one called constant views, there's one called, I think it's shared views, there's one called... Uh, uh, ramp up views. They all do very different things. They, do, they, they allow the tester to mimic different types of requests, whether it's a huge spike and then it slows down and then another huge spike and then it slows down or whether it's going to be a constant hammering of, uh, of the site. It's really like this tool is so, so good. Um, and what I was, what I, uh, well, the first iteration I did was completely wrong, right? Because I, I took this in the sense of a unit test. <laughs> so what I did is I created a test per page per file. So I would ha I, I called my files, my test files, uh, by the pa by the page name that it was going to test. I discovered that that was the not the right thing to do. And in K six, there's a way of creating scenarios. So this is what I learnt. Um, before the Tuesday stream, or was it after the Tuesday stream? Anyway, and what you can do is you can uh, create these scenarios. It's all basically like this big JSON object. And each scenario um, will is basically a test. And you can start a scenario, a scenario at various different times. So for example, you could have all your scenarios running at once, or you can say, well, this scenario, this first scenario is going to take 10 minutes. So my next scenario is going to start from 11 minutes or the 10 minutes. I, I like to put a minute in between just to 
calm things down. Um, if I'm if I'm testing various different pages, sort of like individually, so. 10 minutes on the first duration, then the second scenario starts maybe 11 minutes or 10 minutes, 50 sec uh, 30 seconds, something like that. And then the next scenario and then the next scenario. So what I've done is I've created scenarios for every single public facing um, site. Uh, so I've just been asked a question, uh, a, a valuable question here, uh, pardon the pun, isn't K6 expensive? No, it's open source. Um, it's open source, and so is uh, so is Grafana, so is InfluxDB. It's it's uh, completely free. And what I've got working, let's let's uh, get on to how I've actually built it. So with K6, it's K6Art.io, um, and I should say, <laughs> I should say I am not sponsored at all by any of these. This is just information that I think is great, um, and uh, I think they've done a great job. There you go. That's the that's that bit out of the way. Um, so what I've what they have on K6IO is um, like their installation guide. They talk about how to install it using Brew if you're using Mac, or if you want to use like a, if you're on a Linux thing, it would be app, app get. But but they have Docker images. So what you can do, what I've done is I've created a Docker compose file that has the services such as K6, InfluxDB, Grafana. Um, and I have also, I've also in that compose file, I have the uh, the how to code well.net web server, the website itself in there too. And that's running um, at the moment, it's running in production mode, so it's running with the, your composer um, dump autoloader, your you know optimized autoloader. It's uh, and and as I've been playing with K6, what I've been doing is I've been tweaking um, opcache settings and I've been tweaking caching settings and stuff like that. Um, as as I've been running it, now I went completely crazy with the first set of tests, as you can expect. And I, I thought, well, let's just throw on a thousand users and and do it for a, for a, a very small amount of time. And guess what happened? Um, well, everything crashed. And also, I wasn't running in production mode. I was running in development mode. So every time the the the, the server loaded, uh, <laughs> the debug bar would come on, and nothing was cached. And I basically just crashed my whole machine. Um, I then thought, no, that, that's silly because what you're doing is you're t what I'm doing here is I'm actually testing the dev site. There's no point in doing that. So I, I put on you know the production environment, uh, the app uh, app ENV uh, prod. I put in pro product production uh, credentials and other bits and pieces like that, and I ran that image locally. Now I can do this because we have this wonderful GitHub pipeline. Uh, so whenever I make a ch uh, uh, a commit uh, or do a, a pull request, what's what that's doing is it's automatically um, when I merge that in, it's automatically building an image and sending it to my private Docker Hub uh, registry. So what happens is I have a staging um, a staging image. So it's how to code well hyphen website colon staging. Uh, so that's my latest staging image. And then I've got how to code well hyphen website colon staging hyphen and then the uh, the checksum or, or the first part of the checksum anyway of the of the git hash, not the checksum. Yeah, the git hash, the first part of the git hash, uh, because I use that for blue, de blue, green deployments. So I can switch. I can find the latest change and I can uh, I can use that hash. But I'm using the staging, just the how to code well hyphen website colon staging as my as my quote unquote production esque sort of image um, and I'm injecting different um, uh, environment variables to make that into a production like thing and that gets picked up by the entry point that also gets picked up by the obviously the docker file itself and because it knows that it's running in production mode it then does a bunch of stuff in the image uh, when that gets built so you know there's no development packages installed it's nice and light so essentially because i i, I can't remember which talk it was but i remembered i went to a talk once uh, on acceptance testing and they said that and it, this is very valuable um knowledge they said that your acceptance tests should be testing the your your system that 
closely mimics production. There's no point in doing an acceptance test, um, loads of acceptance tests that take hours and hours and hours and hours and hours just on development because that's not you're not testing the actual thing that's going live. So you want to try and keep your 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 tests, your acceptance test, your load tests to as close to production as possible in terms of the setting configuration. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, so um, I was a little bit skeptical about using Docker uh, because obviously this was a new tool. This was a, a new new toy that I was playing with. And with, with Docker comes a bit of a challenge because, you know, setting up ports and setting up all... It would have been far easier, I think, if I had just installed it locally. But then I wouldn't have the ability to... Um, to hook things in with Docker Compose um, as easier because as easy because I'm using a Docker machine, like a virtual machine with Docker in it. So swings and roundabouts, swings and roundabouts. Okay, so let's talk about what I've done then. So uh, I, like I said, I've created Docker containers that house the Grafana InfluxDB K6 and a production production ready site. So this is running like uh, this is running alongside the development site, if that makes sense. Okay, so I created small tests for every public facing um, uh, page. So any page that can be accessed without being without having to log in. And I created long tests as well. So when I say small tests, sorry, I meant what I meant there is small tests that run for like a minute um, and have uh, large numbers of virtual users, but only run it for a minute. And then um, those so those scenarios each of those scenarios, I think there's like 12 scenarios, each of those 12 scenarios would run for a minute and they would run after the previous scenario. Um, so it would become, eventually it would become something between 12 minutes and 15 minutes to actually process the whole lot, um, which in my opinion is quite a small thing. You know, it's a small sort of smoke test if you want to just test the whole you know, all of your all of your pages, that's pretty good. And I can also ramp up the virtual users if I wanted to, to act like a, a, a DDoS if I if I really wanted to make my server struggle. Uh, and I also created longer tests. So these are longer tests. These are smaller virtual users um, where the duration is spanning a longer period of time. Um, the reason why I've done this is because I wanted to see how the caching handled and 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 um it handled upon load over a longer period of time the smaller duration it's like a fast spike of stuff right and usually you get a load of cache misses and stuff like that but when you you're doing it over a longer duration of time what i was seeing was in the graphs you would have a spike at the start and then it would slowly peter off as things were being cached um, and shared across different requests Whereas with the smaller durations of time, it would just become very spiky, obviously. Um, so all of the, I suppose all of the, these things are stuff that I kind of knew that was going to happen, but I wanted to see something to actually, you know, prove that that was going to happen. Also, another uh, uh, someone also mentioned to me um, a while back that performance testing is okay, but don't just go into your your PHP any file or your your whatever settings and just turn bells and whistles on. You need to have evidence. You need to actually see what works and what doesn't work, which means that you need to have graphs and charts and all of this stuff um, to work from. Um, and using the smaller tests, I was able to do that quite quickly. I was able to 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 change things. The longer test took took for those twelve scenarios took in the region of three hours to finish. So what I was doing is I was running them overnight and then I was coming back in the morning and I was just analyzing the results, running a, a setting some bits and pieces on that evening and then running it again. Um, ideally, I would like to have my own box here dedicated to this kind of stuff, I think, um, because that would be quite nice. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've, uh, so which server host do you recommend? This is another question from Daniel. Recommend, um, so I am currently looking f in terms of um, web host, in terms of cloud hosting, I use Linode a lot. Linode is really, really good. 
Um, I use Linode and AWS. However, for this, I would probably use Linode rather than AWS because Linode is more throwaway, I feel, and AWS can cost a lot of money, especially if you're firing a lot of traffic at something. Um, if I was to build this in-house, which I would love to do, I would probably look at some sort of, I've got a rack server in this office, so I would like to probably get some sort of 1U um, rack server uh, and and just kit it out with a lot of RAM and uh, a decent CPU. As to what, I have no idea. I am also looking, um, I have my eye on a System76, um, oh, what, do you, what do they call their new desktops? I've forgotten. Thelio, Thelios, Thelios, Thelios. I think that's what that, how it's pronounced. Thelios. Yeah, I have a, a, a my eye on that, but that's also to to video production. I would like to um, do more video editing um, where I'm not constrained with Apple. I would like to learn some video editing software with uh, Linux, probably some KDE and KDE and Live. Um, but that's a, that's a whole different story. That's a whole different story. And I'm looking for maybe a System76 box for that to, to, to handle that load. At the moment, I'm, I'm a little disappointed with uh, the, the state of play with Apple in the sense that, um, whoops, uh, with the sense that I can't, uh, I can't have an M1 that is um, 32 gigs of RAM. That's a, a real frustration of mine because anything I get needs to have more at, at the very minimum 32 gigs of RAM at least. So that's, uh, that's, that's why I'm holding back from the M1 uh, bandwagon. Okay, let's move, back to, let's move back to K6 and load testing. So yeah, like I said, I created these tests that are against the public facing sites. And the best thing about this is that they're JavaScript. So you can just make like a JavaScript request um, and because it's JavaScript, you can grab all sorts of various things and you can install various things JavaScript wise into it, um, which is, which is nice. And I'll talk now about some of the things that I liked about this. So I love the ease of use. The configuration is in the code. Okay. So you can commit your configuration and that was something else that I was really, really enjoyed especially with Grafana. So Grafana, as I mentioned, is this wonderful dashboard type interface that you can configure dashboards and panels. First time I've ever used it this week. And you can save all of your dashboard configuration to JSON. And then you can commit that JSON in source control, which meant that I was able very easily to just change from my laptop in the evenings to the, uh, to the MacBook mini uh, to run overnight. And uh, I could just commit the source control. When I was tinkering with the dashboards, there are certain things you can do, like you can you can actually, in the dashboard in Grafana, which is so nice, uh, you can write queries like you would write a SQL query to query the InfluxDB uh, database that holds all of the K6 stuff. You don't have to use InfluxDB, you could use whatever you want to use to, to store the stuff. Uh, you just have to configure it through your Docker Compose stuff. But because you're querying through SQL, you can come up with all sorts of lovely sort of mathematical queries and you can plot all of those things on various different axes on, on the graphs and the charts. And they can be bar charts, they can be, they can be one of those uh, gauges, um, you, they could be uh, line graphs, they could be curve graphs, they could be all sorts of stuff. They can be heat maps, they can be histograms, all sorts of lovely, is histogram one? Maybe not. But all sorts of lovely, lovely things. There's one where it looks a bit like, you know, the GitHub squares, where the GitHub squares are like light green, dark green, dark green. And you can also set al alerts in these as well, so they can, they can change the colors of the, of the graphs. I haven't played around with alerts yet. That's something that I want to do um, and see how that works. Um, the feedback loop in K6 is very, very nice. Um, the, without You don't have to use Grafana at all. You can just run K6 manually through the command line and that will return a lovely um, sort of 
output that says what's actually happening. You know, these virtual units are running against or looping against this test for this duration. And you can also set things like grace periods as well. So you can set your virtual units to gracefully stop as soon as it's coming to the end of the duration. Otherwise, that could skew the results in your, you know, if suddenly if suddenly um, all your virtual units just die because you've hit the duration. Um, so they can ramp down and they can ramp up and they can gracefully stop as well, depending on your executor configuration and, and such. So that's nice. And the the, uh, the output uh, has, if you're using scenarios, it'll tell you which scenario you're on. It'll also go give you a progress bar of that scenario. And all the scenario, the subsequent scenarios will count down to when they're about to fire off. And like I said, you can run scenarios together if you wanted to, or you can run, as I've done, scenarios individually if you want to test the load on a single page. It's, you know, it's a different story, isn't it? If you want to test two pages together simultaneously, that's a different, that's a different story than testing them individually. Uh, test is done in JavaScript, as I mentioned, and also, as I mentioned, it's in open source. Um, scenarios are a great way to chain tests together or run multiple tests at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So there's a, a couple of things that I don't like about, uh, about this and please forgive me if, if, if I've maybe misinterpreted the documentation or I haven't learned enough and there's the, these could come across as assumptions. Um, but it's. I find it, it even with these scenarios, it is awkward to run multiple tests in succession. So the way I assumed that it would work is that you would run, um, you would run a, you would have a test per site per per page. Sorry, per per page. So you would have a test file per scenario. You wouldn't just have one test file with all the scenarios. You would have a test per file or a scenario per file and you could target and you could create like a suite like you've got with codeception where it would run all of the scenarios off one after the other well that doesn't really you can't really do that you can't really have multiple files in k6 or that i've seen you can however because it's javascript you can have tests in separate files and then have one main file where you're importing those tests in and then you have that main file as your sort of scenario manifest shall we say and you can you can run it like that i find that a little awkward i would prefer to have a suite where uh you can you know it, it's a bit like um running unit tests in codeception or php unit um but anyway uh, that's, that's just, that's just me. Okay. So I would also like, and again, this is probably because of my naivety on what I haven't learned yet. I would like more testing criteria in Grafana in the database. Um, this might be a limitation to influx DB. I haven't tried any others and I've only seen or read a handful of, um, of blog articles on how to do this. I'm sure there are other ways to do do this. I probably am missing some mathematical query that um, gets me the right results that I need. But it, 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 isn't, it isn't terribly straightforward. When you load this, you kind of like, oh great, I'm in this thing. The, how do I configure it? Configuring it is quite, configuring Grafana, <coughs> excuse me, for the first time is a little bit confusing I found um, but once you get started it kind of it kind of you kind of get ha yeah a hang of it I suppose but you know as I mentioned this is me delving into the DevOps world and I don't do this often <laughs> so maybe this is just the way it works I don't know okay so now I'm going to talk about so they're, they're the only two issues that I've got they're the only two, two issues that I got there I suppose there is one more so when um, when I was creating multiple tests in, uh, you know, multiple test files, I thought what I could do is I could just run a, a single suite and it would run all those files as I mentioned before. That can't work. I have to run a manifest file or a scenario file, I should call it, um, that has all the scenarios and, the, and their start times on it. Uh, I also tried doing a Docker run and having like uh, 
So like it's K6 run and then the script name. Uh, I was trying to put in amp double ampersands as well to run multiple uh, tests one after the other. But that got, got really cumbersome, especially when you've got 12 pages that you want to hit. So that got a bit tricky. So I suppose that would be that would probably be my biggest bugbear is is that you're locked into these scenarios, which is a good thing, but it can also be quite tricky as well. So for example, uh, the scenarios that I've got here for the twelve that's quite a lot of stuff because you've got like what five or six different configuration rules for each of these twelve scenarios. So you're looking at quite a large file and how to code well.net is a very small website so if you're if you've got a bigger website then you've got a massive scenario file so you would break that up into having multiple files of scenarios so you would have you know like a scenario that hits you would have various scenarios that do different things in different files but then but my problem is running all those together is going to be quite painful you kind of need to have an overarching suite and this is where I go back to the whole, you know, if it was a bit more like Codeception, where you can you just have these individual or, or a PHP unit where you have these individual test files and you can run those and it loops over them, um, that would be far, far better. Maybe that can happen, I don't know, but I haven't found a way to do it yet. Anyway, so let's talk now about what I'm going to do next with all of this stuff. So originally I wanted to give myself a whole week to do this. Uh, so that would end on um, this Sunday, but I'm going to give myself another week to do this because there are some things, other things that I would like to do. So we're going to probably play with this on Sunday on Twitch. We're probably going to play with this again on uh, Tuesday on YouTube, on uh, live on YouTube. And then we're probably going to play with this again, uh, finally on the last Sunday. So next Sunday. Um and these are the things that I wouldn't mind doing. I want to test the registration and the login forms. So as I mentioned, this is running through JavaScript and you can you know, hook into various things and uh, submit forms and all of this stuff, manipulate the DOM. It's JavaScript, right? It's JavaScript. So I want to test and you, you can handle cookies and stuff like that. So that's all good. So I want to test the, uh, the load for the registration page and the login pages. Um, and see how they get on. Uh, I want to add some more alerts. I kind of touched on alerts earlier. So I don't know yet what you can and cannot do with an alert. Um, however, I have seen sort of, um, I guess I've seen sort of tutorials that show an alert change the graph's color based on the, a threshold that you give. However, I, ha I really haven't dealt with any of that. So I've just kind of read about it and went, oh, that's interesting. So I want to play with that a little bit. I want to play with that a little bit. Um, I would like to, at the moment, um, the the way I've, because I've tinkered a little bit with PHP INI and I've added the PHP 8, PHP 8 JIT and I've done also, I've done various things with the caching um, and other things in PHP INI. Um, the site is running really s slick and quick at the moment. And I would like to see at what point does the site get to one second per page. At the moment, it's, it's, I'm, I'm throwing lots of users at it and it's still under half a second. So what I would like to do is just see where the threshold is. I haven't quite got there yet. Uh, this is running off of that, that short test period. So I want to see what happens uh, when that happens. Uh, okay, so I want to add some error panels because at the moment I'm just testing the load. I'm testing the duration of the request. Whereas what you can do, because again, it's JavaScript, you can check for the response headers. So you can make sure that you're returning a 200 OK response header. You can also check for other things. You can, you can make sure that, um, you know, you can, you can check for, for requests that failed. You can, you can also get the, the time for the request that's being connected um, and other things like that. Um, so that's super important. I was, when I was first playing with this and I put all the virtual users up and I had a very small duration, um, I was getting all sorts of request timeout issues. And I was seeing that in the, in the, um, in the feedback of the command line, but I wasn't seeing that in the alerts in, in the, in the dashboard, in the Grafana. So I want to, I want to sort of mimic that again and actually see those come up because there's no point in just testing the happy path, right? You want, you want to make sure that it, 
you're testing errors coming back as well. So that's that's good. So testing the negative and the positive of this. So how much can you throw at this? And then what happens and how can I capture the errors after this, you know, after I've hit that threshold? So knowing where your boundaries are, that's kind of what I want to do. Uh, because I'm dealing with the login and the register forms, I'm going to be saving and inserting data into the database. So what I need to do, and this is something that I'll probably do on Sunday on Twitch, if I haven't done it already, is I, I want to create a script that um, that uh, resets the database. So... Uh, when I run all of the tests, I want to then run uh, a command that resets the database so it brings it back to what it was before the tests were ran. Otherwise, I'm going to have just loads of data in the database that means absolutely nothing. I'm also going to have to come up with some form of way of creating a sort of anonymous random users as well when I'm doing the login and the register. So that's going to be fun. We'll probably deal with that on Sunday too. So yeah, I mean, this is, f I'm finding this very interesting, the wonderful world of DevOps and seeing like how much I can throw at this site. It's very, very good. In the past, I've used a tool uh, called Siege that does this. And um, that was very good, but it doesn't have any strings on, uh, on, on K6. I, I, at the moment, I recommend it. I really do. And I really do like the Grafana dashboards. And I see that there are other things that you can hook into Grafana as well, uh, other other kind of metrics from other things as well. Also, one thing that I did whilst I was doing this, because when I was running this in development mode, which was so, so slow, I was, I was worried about the database. So one thing I did was I turned on uh, slow query logs. And I was telling that, uh, telling the slow query log, and I didn't see anything in it. So it... it I think it was to do with the Symphony cache in the in the dev environment. We're running it under production. It's it's super quick, super super quick, especially when you've got the PHP eight uh, JIT and the op cache all configured nicely. Anyway, thank you ever so much for uh, for watching. Um, I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your great questions as well. If you've got some more questions, then please let me know. Um, let me know on Discord or in the comments here. That would be great. Uh, another, uh, just a point of news, I am starting to upload all of the back catalogue of, uh, of this podcast to Rumble. So if you, if you use Rumble instead of YouTube, then uh, do check out that, the, the How to Code Well channel on there too. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everybody. And uh, have a great week. Have a great week. And if I don't see you again uh, by uh, on Sunday at, uh, what is it, 2.30 we start? 2.30 in the afternoon, British summertime. Have a great weekend. Take care, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye.